Hey, everybody. Do you want to make a D&D podcast like us or really any podcast? Well, then you got to know about Anchor. First off, my favorite part, it's very free. It's the most free. It costs no dollars. That's sick. Second part, you can start monetizing with their monetization tools immediately with no minimum listenership. Also very sick. You can now, this is new, you can take any song from Spotify and add it directly into your episodes. And let me tell you, that's freaking sick nasty. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Last time. Unlawful Stupid. William is here, Beatrice is here, and Mr. Dean is here, and he talks about the case file with you. So the jury, unfortunately, is going to be stacked against you, Beatrice. It's, of course, it's all Sun Elves who have only heard bad things about you. Of course, I will be doing my best to sway them the opposite way, but I think we're going to be able to have a strong case here. It wasn't you. Someone has gotten the word out that somehow your room was left open, and so perhaps they think it could have been you who was out and about. I don't know. Whoever is pretending to be Mrs. B, it clearly is awful. You wake up the next morning. The town is, has maligned the streets. The people here are angry. You walk into this dome-shaped building once again. You take the familiar spot at the table to the left. And uh, about the time you look over, you can't quite see who the the person is that is like on the, the plaintiff's team. The guy who is accused, Miss Beatrice, uh, of causing these terrible, heinous acts. The judges walk out. And you hear the bailiff, um, who's kind of out next to him, say... All rise for the Honorable Judge Jern. Bailiff says, the Honorable Judge Jern. Judge Fudge. Uh, and as we mentioned at the close of the last episode, Beatrice, you, it hits you all of a sudden. You realize that this judge, this Sun Elf, is the same Sun Elf that um, you remember. The reason why you kind of joined the KNG in the mm-hmm. first place is he told you that he was going to just, his people were going to come and destroy your village. Because they wanted the land. Not Haven Bay, sorry, excuse me. Haven Bay. Angels Cove. They're <laughs> and Haven and Haven Bay. No one no destroy one's everything. <laughs> everything. Uh, they were they gonna run, all. they were gonna wreck your shop, and they were gonna take your home. And so the KNG Everywhere told you. Everyone you ever visited and had a nice, and had a nice time. Yeah. <laughs> They're dead. Uh, and that's when the KNG told you that they would handle it if you were to join. That's what you know. And um that's what we opened with. They handled it by appointing him to a judgeship so that he would not have any ambitions for real estate any further. <laughs> Apparently, it's bullshit. And um, he says, I need a different voice. I keep falling kind of the same voices here. What does he got? What do you think? What do you think Jern sounds like now? Give me, give me. Some. I think he's an honorable judge. I oh, want to be honorable. It's Chauncey. <clears throat> Ready? I'm just, I'm just a slick Oh, good, guy. good morning, everyone. Yeah. I, oh, I, that's the Judge yeah. Fudge I was looking for. I'm in my life. so thankful for you all to be here today. Uh, please take a seat. Any? Uh, does it does it pair well with the with the overt elf racism? Yeah. Now everybody, <laughs> t- everybody, take out your. I don't know. Now what we have here everybody is a case. Everybody, take out your lynching ropes. Of, um, oh my gosh, uh, a, a case of the Sun Elf City versus, and he looks over, Miss Beatrice, and he's like asking, like, Beatrice Haven. We're all on history check this boy. For one thing, Miss B has never said her full name here, I believe. There's statues of you, man. Like, what in, are you talking in, about? In Angel's Cove, not here in the Sun Elf City. There. Mr. Gene says, uh, I may have given him your name. I don't know. You gotta put it on the paperwork. Yeah, it was on the paperwork. Sorry, it's in the packet. We gotta. 
You know names have power, right? Why would you I do put, that? I put, I, put, I put your address as my address because I just didn't know. I just thought maybe there's going to be weird things that we live together. I mean, that would be crazy. <laughs> I think, uh, anyways, well, I can change it. We can change it after. Now, uh, as is common practice here, the uh, defendant gets an opportunity to uh, make a plea. Uh, Miss Beatrice Haven, uh, how do you plea? Not guilty. And everyone like kind of, wow, and they're kind of getting a little bit loud, a little rowdy with it. And now I will have order in my courts. And he hits three times the gavel. Order. If you can't handle yourselves, you hooligans, and I'll make sure you're never set foot in here again. Mm. Now, Mrs. Beatrice Haven, here's how this works. The plaintiffs, and he kind of motions to them, will make their case. They may call up a few people to stand a defense, and then you'll have the same opportunity. Uh, following that, we'll have... Uh, We'll have people here make a verdict and pass that up to us, and that ultimately comes to me. I'll make the final verdict, and then there'll be closing arguments and sentences, if it comes to that. Are there any questions? Not at all. When you're ready. Good. Without further ado, and so then coming through the back door, uh, like the, the door that is in the back of this this room. Is this, are, oh, is this, is this the prosecutor? Yes. Can I make a request? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, for this voice, can he be like a fast-talking New Yorker? From like yes. the 1950s? Can he be like, All right, now listen here, Josh. <laughs> hey, let's see. Let me tell you something, Josh. I got the first accent. I want to get a bit of fuss. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. I'll try to do it and make it as enjoyable and slightly annoying as possible. Uh, so there is a, a, a taller sun elf. And you see someone behind him. You can't quite see who this figure is. But you know that this is the, the prosecuting part, the one who's like made the accusations. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you see him. And and I don't know how you feel about it. I kind of want to know, just this will be like an internal to you as characters. It's Dr. Ryan. And what? they saunter on up and over he to the, the guy table. In the lab coat. And uh He's like, hey, Judge, I'm here. The prosecutor's ready to take this court to case, and we'll, we shouldn't take very long here. We'll be done. Now, I'll tell you, son, when things are going to happen. Now, here, Miss Beatrice Haven has uh, pled not guilty, which means you can now uh, send your people up here to, to give any kind of testimony and provide evidence. I won't run you all through the rigmarole, and so what we'll do is they kind of bring up... Um, those same witnesses that you all got to talk to yesterday, right? And so he goes through uh, first, uh, Mr. Howard. Yes. Okay, just a quick admin note. As soon as Dr. Ryan shows up, I think that Fume is go- and, and Breeze are both going to like get up and like move so that they're sitting behind him. And actually Breeze is going to go off and he's going to fiddle with one of the lights. And he's going to try to make like a little shadow next to Ryan so that if need be boy can bibbity bop over to him. Okay. Uh, I'm confused because Dr. Ryan he, what was he was not a sun elf, was he? No. How is this man allowed in this town if it's just a sun elf town and they're even more racist? Well, I think he's he not was, any kind of I elf. Think, That's the grossest thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Ew, David. <laughs> Uh, and so the prosecutor, he questions Mr. Howard, and he gets out of him sort of the same things that uh, this lady who he you know points to you, who was it that you saw? He points to Miss Beatrice, came in and describes all the you know the things she bought. And so then now, uh, the judge says, and the defense. And so like again, I don't know if you want to point out uh, the points that we had discussed in terms of the magic or whatnot, or if you expect him to uh, recant then. You, would you like to question? Would you like Mr. Dean to question? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm probably going to lean over to William and be like, could you help with this one? <laughs> I wasn't sure how to talk to this man here. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dean, do you want me to go up there or 
Yeah, I think you have the prowess. I mean, you've you've seen this a thousand times. Yeah. Oh, I'm a fucking attorney now. Great. I will back you up if you need anything. I got you. But I think we're gonna be okay here. (sighs) Cracks and knuckles. Boy, boy, was my has my life been just like preparation for this? Um, All right. Well, William stands up. He like adjusts his, uh, you know, his suit and his. May he made sure his cape was ready, so he kind of turns. Is it billowing? Billows. Yeah, yeah okay. fuck yeah, it is. That's the whole reason I have it. And I approach. It's <laughs> the whole reason I have. And I say, um, it's the whole point. Uh, and it's Doctor Ryan on the stand, correct? No, no, this is uh, no. Mr. Howard, the apothecary owner. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. I approach less aggressively, but still confidently. <laughs> Mr. Howard, is it is it true that? You've never met Miss B before, prior to your accusations the last few days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Is it true that you sound really grumpy? I don't know if I would say that, but perhaps people do perceive me to be grumpier than most. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure you were being honest with yourself and and with the court at large. So... When we spoke yesterday, uh, we talked of magic, and and the person you saw Mm. wasn't exactly the person you saw. When you met Mrs. B yesterday, for the first time, did you feel that that person matched the description or the general demeanor of this imposter the day before? Well, no... All right, that makes sense. The jury is uh, like mouthing to each other. And is there anything that would give you reason or cause to think that uh, our lovely Mrs. B here actually came to purchase these poisonous materials from you um, and it wasn't some imposter? I'm sorry, Your Honor, he's leading the, the, the witness. Oh, that's oh, fair. Wow. I withdraw. I withdraw. I withdraw. That's fair. Okay. Let, let me let me let me rephrase my question, Your Honor. How often do you sell these poisonous supplies? And he <laughs> begins like kind of sweating. <laughs> sweating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. No, it's all. Oh, me. Well, I, uh, I don't exactly just sell. They they together when you when you create when when someone can take them together and and make them then they become. Then they become poisonous. It's not that I, sure. me, Mr. Howard, sell them as poisons. Uh, of course. No, I, I of course. I, I wasn't uh, intending to insinuate that you're the cause of the problem here. I just, the frequency of those in- ingredients that are sold in your store, would you say you sell those types of ingredients daily, weekly, monthly? I, well, yeah, I sell them probably daily, except the... <laughs> The hay bale was a weird, weird nope. request. Perfect. You've answered my question. You sell these very ingredients every day to multiple people all the time. But then you see someone who looks like Mrs. B, and obviously my uh, detect, rod of detect magic, which I can put into evidence, I guess, but you guys can detect magic. That determined there was magic license and your shop doesn't allow magic. Is that true? Well, only to concoct the things we make, and that's Correct. myself or my team. Correct. So the residue of magic was the magic used to cause impersonations. Devin, I am staring down Mr. Ryan. Or I'm not staring him down, but like getting a look at him. He give anything away? Can I check to see if he's, he's not liking the fact that we're calling him out for using magic? So what you're you're saying that you're asking Mr. Howard, but you're staring at obviously Miss uh, Dr. Ryan. So I ask the question, and then I look around the courtroom. But mm. I'm the whole point is to look at Dr. Ryan. Are you trying to stare at him, or just catch a glance to see what just, he's? I just want to see his face is as I'm saying that somebody um, is impersonating Mrs. B with magic. Roll uh, perception for me. Uh, yes, I would love to do that for you, just for you, Devin. 
All right, let's okay, no one else. No one else gets this roll. Don't tell him what it is. Nobody else gets this roll. I'm gonna see D and D Beyond. Dang it. It's <gasps> natural twenty, baby. So Ooh. that's uh, twenty-one. You just barely. I twitches a little bit. Corner of his right eye. Perfect. Doesn't really. No, no, shoulders don't move. Head doesn't move. <laughs> I twitch. William shouts Firefly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's on. <laughs> Perfect. So it's it's fair to say that you sell these items every day then. And you've you've only met her once for real. Yeah, I... Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, if that's uh, if that's all, then I, I suppose we'll we'll leave it at that. Oh, a real quick question: I did want to just confirm. When was it that you said Mrs. This this imposter uh, showed up at your store? I'd say it was about um, eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning. Perfect, and it was about an hour that this uh, this supposed alleged Mrs. B stayed. Aye. Perfect. And did, did this uh, this Mrs. B happen to pay you in coin? Ah, uh, she did. You know, it's a curious thing about coin, and, and you're a man of science. Did you know? Uh, well, yeah, well, I guess because did of every things. well uh, alchemy is science. Did you know that every person's fingerprint is unique? Kind of looks at his own. And back up you, like almost waiting for the question. That was the question. Did you know every person's fingerprint is unique? Oh no, I didn't. I, I yes. I mean, so I we could. Yes, I've always wondered. As I stare at my thumbs. We could definitely. <laughs> Man has always wondered. We could definitely <laughs> take <laughs> the coin that was paid to you and just compare it to a few samples. Perhaps find out who was really there. I. I doubt that I can pull the coins. That's exchange in and out day to day. I don't know. There's no way I could find that out. Might I add something to your oh, questions? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. I walk over to you. You, you motion. Or what? Do you, or do you want to ask them? Mind link, bro. Ask, okay. ask oh. him. What oh, did okay. I buy? So you give me like a nod or something, and I I put my finger to my temple, and I. Just, boop, 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 boop. What's up? Ask him what did I buy. Um, the whole list of things I've bought. I'm allergic to hay. What? That's a weird allergy. I, I know, put another time, put another time. Uh, hold on. Boop. You get some nice jazz music. Um, but it's like low, you know? So you still hear everything that's going on. It's not like those, when you get on those ones, you're like, oh my god, let me take my headphones off. Uh, how would I, I? I apologize. I did have one more question. Could you just give me a list of everything that sh- uh, this person allegedly purchased? Yeah, and uh, because I'm not a smart D and D man, he gives you a list of like different things that make or make sure. poison. He gives you hay, and he gives you an empty uh, note. He says a, a fresh notebook. Excellent. And and there was a big bale of hay that this person carried out then. Well, it was like if you take a hay bale and chop it into you know, falls into sections, you got a section of it. You no, know, bushels are big. I mean, just like a section of hay. If you put it in quarters, you took a quarter of it. Excellent. Uh, perfect. That's all for now. And then I, I go sit down and I say, Hey, Dean, I need, you to, I need you to bring me some hay in. And then I hang up my collect call. Oh, okay. Um... Uh, Your Honor, if if we could have a, uh, I request a ten minute that, recess, please. Yeah. He says, "No." Okay. Oh wait, wait. Not granted. Boop, boop, boop. Hey, Fume, I need you to go get a thing of hay and sneak it in here. Just put it behind our desk. You got it, boss. Thanks. Uh, so that witness comes hey, off the stand. Hey, breeze! I'm in murder mode. <laughs> go get some hay. <laughs> <laughs> And Breeze runs, all right, all right, all right. And the second witness comes up to the stand. Um, we don't have to roll through all these again if you don't want to, but that was very impressive, Dwayne. Um, I feel like this one would be the easiest if you guys wanted to argue for it, uh, for the language. Um, actually, I have a thing I want to do, so let's do this. She gets up to the stand, and the guy you know, asks all of his questions. It seemed very incriminating. She overheard this, the words that she mentioned. 
Uh, the jury begins to talk. Order, order that the judge calls for because people are like, they're hearing this and just hearing it is swaying them. Defense turn. And um, who is translating? Uh, there's, so there's actually some, yeah, there'll be someone there who, who okay. can translate. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Just making and, sure um, that that exists and we're not being swindled. The, the judge says, oh, I would like to see the plaintiff's representation and the defense's representation up here in my chambers for just a moment. And so that'll be, you can make, uh, that'll be William, Dean, and then the, uh, the fast-talking guy for the uh, plaintiff. When the fast-talking man leaves, <laughs> is Dr. Ryan alone? No, he has, there's <laughs> another guy to his right with him, and there's still all What's these that people that are like? sitting there. We're going into his chambers? Hot. Damn. One thing we love at Lawful Stupid, among the other things we love at Lawful Stupid, is spreading the word about your business. Or maybe you want to tell your sweet, sweet grandma that you love her for the world to hear. We want to give you that chance. If you're a business and want to get your services on the air, or just want to tell a loved one a personal message, head on over to lawfulstupid.org forward slash message in a bottle. There you can take around 250 words to say what you want. Business ads are $20. Personal ads are 10 Tell the world what you have to hear with Lawful Stupid's message in a bottle. So there's a door that appears uh, underneath, like his the outcropping he's on, and you uh, you walk into that up the stairs, and he says, "Now I, I dial my phone to Mrs. B. Just, okay. Hey, just hold on. You'll be able to hear things when I say them out loud. Just you just can't hear the other side. Um, and the judge says, "Now there has been a uh, very strange request by." Mr. Dean. A um, strange perf- request by Mr. Dean. Hmm. To perform some um, unorthodox, but he says relevant uh, ways to prove the next portion of, of the defense's case. Now, uh, I've never seen this done, but apparently this he, he's sure that this is how they're going to determine that uh, and I don't want to give it away so that the prosecution can't can't take this away from the defense um, but I've allowed it I've allowed this thing to happen um, and he says to the prosecution you you may exit so I can explain this to uh, mr and he points to William um, Raven uh, mr Raven and so the prosecution kind of gives a side eye and he leaves <clears throat> And he says, uh, Mr. Raven, uh, it has come to my attention that Mr. Dean here would like to take an orthodox approach to this next point of proving that Miss Beatrice Haven does not know how to speak Sylvan. Because as you know, simply asking somebody if they know a language and them saying no does not in fact prove that they do not know that language. And Dean says, all right, man, so I- I've got a friend who, who can really can like do trances. Uh, she's in town. Um, she she is known to kind of like um, like a positive psychology enter the mind, kind of flip how uh, people perceive things, whether that's pain or pleasure, um, kind of like a hypnotherapy type thing. And so, I would like to put Miss B in a situation where she thinks that perhaps you're in danger. And that this woman is shouting things in Sylvan. And, and so the only way that Miss B would know to save you is to listen to what the woman is saying. Um, but obviously Miss B's not going to know, right? And she knows that you're a friend. I, I guess the point we need to establish is 
your friendship and your connection for the for the for the jury to buy it. Oh sure, he cancels the mind call. Oh yeah, we're really close. Okay, um, I don't know how you do that, but I'm gonna let you set that up again. And then the only people who are gonna be able to see kind of this vision, um, the jury kind of knows what's coming up. Yeah. So uh, you just you've question. Got- is this like a magical thing that they're doing, or is this like a psychological? Illusory. Thing? Yeah, it's illusory. I don't know if I'm saying that okay, right. Okay, good. Illusory. Because you, we, I'm sure the sun elves, being elves, know that all elves can't magically be charmed or trance, right? We all remember this. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, good, good. Just, just so we know, this is a psychological trick of the mind. Yes. Not magical. Yes. Hear that, <laughs> listeners? Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, okay. And so he says, oh, is everybody... Everybody understands? Yes, sir. And so you go back down, and uh, he says, All right, William, uh, take the lead. Is this trans person out here already? She is kind of... She's kind of sitting over to the side... And I guess she's she's waiting I, for I you. I give the mind. I give the mind call, and I say, "Hey, Mrs. B, uh, these fucking people are weird. So here's what they're gonna do: these son of people are going to give this hippy dippy, uh, uh, newfangled psychology approach to this. You can call her what she is. She's a she's a mind freak. Yeah, she's a mind freak. So basically, what she's gonna do is is uh, basically." Put you in a trance to help you tell the truth. So just watch the watch or, or whatever the pen, pendulum, whatever she's gonna do. Just relax, open your mind. That way you'll be telling the truth because you have nothing to hide. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. And you can trust me. Always. All right, great. Whoop. All right. So we set them up in front of each other, and she said them in a trance. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so the people included in this that can kind of see this, is she's able to tune the the jury into a part of it that is just for viewing, right? So they know it's a viewing experience. They, they can see this happening. They can see what's happening in real time. But they know without a doubt, no matter what's happening, that it is not real. They are very aware of that. Um, and so then she, the, the, the one who start, begins to put... Um, is being a trance without her knowing it almost um, so everybody but everybody can see this is what, is what you're saying everybody can so what everyone else would see is kind of this woman almost just staring at miss beatrice for a long period of time and it looks like miss beatrice is just staring back at her like in a room it's almost just like an awkward thing for everyone else except the jurors <laughs> oh, <no>. the judge <laughs> the the i don't the what are we calling her the hypnotherapist and Mind freak. Yep. Mind freak. Mind freak. Mind freak. Um, William. Chris Angel. Christina Angel. Mind freak. Christina Angel. Mind freak. And Miss B. <clears throat> and Miss B. Suddenly, you you're like lifted into the air, and it feels you fe- you think you're being lifted into the air, and you're lo- looking down on this courthouse scene, and you're thrown uh-huh. what seems across like the planet. And placed onto this pedestal, high above this roaring ocean, and well, fuck. you see more land come up, and it comes equal to where you're at on this pedestal, right? Uh, maybe not quite. Mm-hmm. There's like a step down, and it seems like this courthouse is appearing below you again. And Doctor Ryan is now—he's got this sword in his hand, and you see bound at his feet is William. And it feels so real. Like, you think, like, has Dr. Ryan done this? Is this, is this actually happening? And you're not sure. Uh-huh. And so what you see is him put this blade to William's throat. And he looks up to you. And he says... Herge, fierge, dear. Fierge, dear, 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 dear. He says, Aneseo Ducara. She'll look hella confused, but uh, she's already reaching for where she knows her where her daggers are. 
Um, He's got a sword to William's uh, throat. And you're about 20 feet out, and he says, Anaseo Dukara? And he's like motioning and kind of moving his hand. And William looks back to you, uh, kind of like shaking his head no to not advance. Uh, as you reach down for your daggers, you realize they're not there. Fuck. Fuck is right. Uh, yeah. And then he says, Mas mi anliat, ya shabil ansen liem. What the fuck? What are you trying to say? Ansen liem. What? Mas mi anliat, ya shabil ansen liem. God, I need subtitles. Uh, <laughs> and she's gonna look at uh, Dr. Wright. I was like, put the sword down. And he says, uh, Shimaman Ilagas Sibas. She's gonna take a step forward. And he pulls the sword across his throat. <laughs> And William kind of, as he's looking at you, gives one last look, and he falls to the ground and bleeds out to death. Yeah, I think, yeah, B's just gonna, like, fucking run in and try to attack this guy. Fuck this bullshit. <laughs> uh, as you run and your fist passes through this character, um, it, it turns into a mist, and I don't know what your emotions are now, but you're back in the courtroom all of a sudden. I think she's just gonna end up immediately standing, like in a huff. Like William puts his the hand adrenaline on her shoulder. <laughs> kind of thing. And then she'll look at William, and then just kind of like go and hug him. <laughs> and so uh, an- another time, Miss B. Everything's fine. <laughs> I think what we'll relay oh, is is that so everyone will describe what just happened. Like she did this vision. Um, and that the directions that you were given by this character, they're not going to say who, they're by this character. Um, I think maybe they didn't perceive it to be the same person that you did. I think you saw it as Dr. Ryan, but they didn't see him as Dr. Ryan. I think it was a cardboard cutout that said, bad, oh, bad person. As, as yeah. you can tell, when under pressure, Mrs. B was unable to save a, a loved one of her, of her, of her sight because she was unable to understand the commands given to her in Sylvan. And if anyone's under that level of distress, don't you think they would use every tool at their disposal? And she was not aware that she was being put in this trance and being put on trial in this way. So it stands to reason she doesn't know the Sylvan language. Oh, uh, and, and for the record, um. Miss Cersei, could you tell everyone here what the commands were that were given to Miss Beatrice uh, moments before she saw her friend die? And she says, uh, in common, uh, yes, she was told to throw herself from the cliff if she wanted to save him. And when she did not, the figure said, one more step, and he dies, and she immediately took one more step. Thank you. Uh, does defense rest, or does defense have anything else? Like our case, or just for this? Thing? For this, for this uh, witness. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're good. Hey, Devin. Out of curiosity, when's that hail appearing behind B? The what? Hey, not hail. Hey. Oh, <laughs> um. I think you guys can make it up if you want. So we'll do. Uh, you guys want to? Do you have do any it? other witnesses that the prosecution? There's going to be one more, the gardener. Yeah, let's do it. Let's keep. Let's keep going. We'll we'll yeah, call that as a rebuttal. Gardener. Yep. So um, you, I guess you rest and you're done. So then they call the gardener up. Fast talker, ask all his questions again. Uh, doc, this Doctor Ryan is unmoving. Um, doesn't give anything up beyond that eye twitch you had earlier. How? How? does the gardener respond to the prosecutor's question? Is he backing the I'm a cool guy who saw it's something that everybody else missed? Uh, or is he going along with the prosecutor's story? He seems to be, almost the way the questions are asked, he feels like he's being pressured more so into being on their side once again. Hmm. 
Sure. And so they they rest, and it's the defense's turn. To to uh, yeah, okay. Uh, dear sir, we spoke yesterday, and and we talked. Uh, first of all, can you just describe to the the courtroom at large? Your expertise and your and your intel- intelligence and your eye for detail. I think it's important that they have that background. Yeah, so I, um, I'm the gardener here, and I've been the gardener here for 20 plus years for, for major government settings, buildings, whatever it is. I'm in charge of helping establish the beauty that you experience all over the city. Um, and the, the statue in the fountain in the middle was one of my finer ones that I've been able to help put together. And then this figure comes the other day, uh, yesterday, and is throwing these large pieces of concrete at the statue, breaking off the head of the one, um, damaging a lot of the, the foliage that's there, and, and causing a scene. Yes. And ooh, somebody of your in, in intellect, uh, does this person just sitting behind me seem like she could just toss around? concrete and pieces of statues to to cause such destruction and he looks back over to the prosecutors and back to you and says uh no right and so with your understanding of how heavy those statues are and your general assessment of Mrs. B does it seem likely that this that Mrs. B would actually have been the person to do that versus an imposter using magic, which, again, we did determine was on the scene. Uh, with magic, perhaps, but if no magic, I would say no. Right. And, and so the prosecutor came up here and asked a lot of fancy questions very quickly, all meant to confuse you and get you on their side. But I have this one question. And all your years of gardening and, and statue creating, would someone as kind as Mrs. B, shown from her trance, come and destroy your garden for no reason? In your opinion, of course. Objection, Your Honor. So the characters, uh, uh, the character of of the the, the defense there, doesn't mean that he didn't commit the crime. Misled, they're leading. Uh, first of all, that's not. You, I'm not leading. I'm asking a question about. Yeah, you, you're leading everybody to think that just because she's a good person in your 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 sense, you think that she didn't commit a crime. Good people commit crimes all the time, even if they don't mean to. Sure, but uh, you're on a order. It's, order. It's, yep. he, three times he says. There, there's a voice from a guard in the back. He goes. He just described an accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, there's a different word for that. <laughs> What do good people do commit crimes and they don't mean to? That's called an accident. Um, so he gets ordered and he says, uh, Mr. Raven. Full jewels. Yes. Uh, great. Uh, what's, uh, what's important here is that we all have histories. We all have our past and our character dictates what we will do when no one is watching. And if we're, you know, a scummy person, we might commit crimes of evil. But sometimes, bad things happen to good people all the time. For instance, Mrs. B is being framed. I I, I have no more questions for the witness. Okay. Uh, And he says, uh, are there any more witnesses? Uh, Your Honor, I would like to bring Mrs. Ha- Mr. Howard back up to the stand. I do have a follow-up question for him. A rebu- as a rebuttal witness, please. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. So after he has stepped down, but you can maybe perhaps address it in your final statement. I, I'm sorry, you're, I can't call this witness back up as you a had rebuttal? Your, you had your opportunity when he was up. And, and I'm allowed to recall... Uh, well, you know, I'm not a, a man of the Sunset Courts, but in proper courts, you're allowed to bring up witnesses, a rebuttal witness to something another witness has said, or if there's more evidence. And, and with, when you say more evidence, he says, uh, 
and he confer he kind of covers covers like this this magical mic he's got in front of him and confers with the two lower uh, judges. He says, "Can you fucking do that? I didn't check the rules." If, <laughs> Mr. Raven, if your evidence does prove to change the 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 substantiation against the defense for, at, at this point, we'll allow it. But if it does not, that no, will right. not look what bode well for your. I I just need a moment. We will it dock you a, thirty cool guy yes. points. It, it won't it won't take long, Your Honor. But it is critical to our case. I, I assure you. And he says, um, "Mr. Howard, come on back up, please." And Mr. Howard, like nervously, climbs back up to the stand. As a reminder, Mr. Howard, uh, just because um, I I am an outsider, it, uh, you know, um, you are still under oath during this questioning even though we're not going to take your oath again and just real quick you stated just a moment ago (laughs) okay so (laughs) again $50 patrons get to make comments and Zebra says as I'm about to question him proceeds to badger Mr. Howard with no point (laughs) Uh, go ahead and knock out a cool guy point from the defense. Would have normally done, <laughs> um, but this is a serious situation. Uh, early in your testimony, you stated that Mrs. B bought a um, a, quart, a quarter of a hay bale. Is that correct? E- yes, that's correct. And she carried it out with her, yes? Yep, carried it right out of him. Well, that's interesting, and here's why. Mrs. B is deadly allergic to hay, and I, we thought we'd demonstrate it, and I motioned to Dean to, like, shove that hay in her face. <laughs> Release the <laughs> hay. Assault. He pulls a string and just falls in the ceiling. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think he pulls out a handful, and he says, I'm sorry about this, but it seems like the best way to prove that you're not that person Take a, stuffs it down stuffs it down the back of her pants <laughs> and he, he makes you look like a scarecrow <laughs> she's sniffling and, and crying and just uh, she, 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 and God, the get this off. everyone starts like chattering so bad. order order I say he bangs so, the gavel if Mrs. and B everyone's still murmuring Mrs. B I said order out. I'll call mistrial in this a heartbeat and everyone like hushes because again, a mistrial is not set up. <laughs> and so <laughs> Dean takes it away and he's like, "I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." Quick, somebody cast D- cure D- sniffles, D- uh, humidifier, antihistamine <laughs> at third level. Um, and he says, um, "Anything else?" Uh, well, I I wanted to point out. Can you make the itchiness clearly, go that, away? Why? I cannot. Why was this necessary? I committed no crime. If she's allergic to hay, there's no way our Mrs. B could have walked out of your shop holding the hay. And he says, well, if, and if there's nothing else, then um, we will let the jury proceed to uh, discuss their verdicts, and we will report back here in 10 minutes. And so he dismisses you all. Um, but you guys kind of just stand around where you are. Miss B, Psst. hey Miss B, <laughs> what's your favorite Owl City song? What? I've never heard of that. Never mind. <laughs> what's what I like to make my family? If that's my favorite one. Um. There's one called Firefly. Oh, no. gosh. Oh, sh- <laughs> Don't need to activate them right now. They, the jury comes back out and he says, I believe the jury has made a decision. And kind of the leader like nods and they have this envelope that they pass up to the lower judges. Lower judges exchange that. And uh, can you guys roll a perception check for me? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure B is like laying on the table right now, arms crossed, and like trying not to die. I rolled a 10. That'll be a 26 for Miss B. Dang! Yep. <laughs> it's a 5 for William. Um, Beatrice, in your sadness and through your swollen eyes, you <sighs> notice that they, they are surprised. And they almost seem angry about like kind of whatever they're discussing. And then they 
they seem to they shake hands and they pass this envelope up <clears throat> and it just says um with a uh the animus vote all accounts of Miss Beatrice on account of uh, attempted murder poisonry poisonry um slander libel uh, and destruction of, of valuable property, government property. Um, not guilty. And the, half the crowd erupts in anger, and the other half is like seems joyful in, in yeah, that in that solution. <laughs> um, and then they almost like start fighting, in fighting with each other. Like the sun elves are like arguing amongst each other in the case of Beatrice. Uh, and you look over to uh, Ryan, and he looks over to you all, and he smiles. I'm shadow stepping to him. I'm shadow stepping to him. I'm drawing the light eater gauntlet blade and I'm putting it to his neck. Oh, um, dang. In the middle of the courtroom? Okay. In the middle of the courtroom. And I'm going to say, <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, pardon my interruption. Thank you so much for finding us innocent. Uh, we're very cool. This guy is not. This is the guy who did all the stuff. And he says, um, <clears throat> he puts his hands up. Whatever do you mean? And so you've got some guards now, some sun elf guards who are coming down, and they've got these, these to spears, side. and they are pointing them at you. They're not in a, like they're not going to attack you, but it's obviously like they can't just let you threaten a man's life in the courts. I'm go- I'm going to hold that blade up to Ryan's throat. I'm going to look him in the eyes and say, "I died once following bullshit that you sold me. I died alone." I won't this time. You can't stop what's about to come. It doesn't matter if I'm dead. I just had to slow you down. It'll make me feel a lot better, so I'd be careful right now. What do you, what do you think's going to happen from here? What do you think you are going to do? I don't know, but it ends with you not leaving here. You're not going to just get away with it. And he kind of pushes his neck up against the blade where it draws its blood. And he says, I'm nothing. I'm just a small cog in a giant machine. And your job's to slow me down? I already did. Oh, well, then I better slow that machine down a little bit, too. And I'm just going to cut his fucking neck. <laughs> I'm just going to. At the same time, William says Firefly in your head. <laughs> Firefly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's where we're in the episode. Man, that's a good place. If I had ended it there, what a big dumb idiot I am. Also, I'm not sure I'd handle it. Hey, buddy. Thanks for <laughs> listening to this episode of Lawful Stupid. Candidly, I have to go throw I a have a week notes. to prepare. Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the prestige. <laughs> wow. Um. I don't know. Like when we do episodes like this, if people just like why I I eagerly wait. People just flocking in and talk about it. It just doesn't happen so much. But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe this one. This one. It does, man. It. it just. It just. It just doesn't hit when we lived. It. That's we yeah. lived so yeah. like a, a, a year from now. Somebody on Discord would be like, "That was wrong." Remember right there? when that guy killed yep. Ron? We're yeah. worried about like the boss fight Dwayne has planned for C four. Like we're like yes. way doing a different thing, and then somebody's like, "That was crazy when Fume like k- gutted Doctor Ryan in front of everybody." They'd be like, "What? <laughs> Who are those people?" Um, that cool. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, and on to the next one, which is one of my crew members. Not the next episode. Well, maybe if you're on autoplay. On to the next. Oh, on to the next one. I. Uh, I'm speechless at this point. Fuck. <laughs> She's speechless and she fucked. Hey, yeah. uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to store.office.org and you can get baseball tees. And here's why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this specifically uh, because I'm wearing one and they're comfortable as fuck. You can get the KNG logo shirt. And let me tell you, I w- here's what I want you to do. And it, I will tell you this if you buy a KNG logo shirt, and then get it and then splatter like red paint across the logo so it's still like visible but like obviously like fuck the KNG then I'll send you another shirt for free if you do Mm. if you buy one take a picture like destroy it destroy it with some paint because the, fuck the KNG. I'll send you another fuck one for free. But you got to post it to socials and and do yeah, all the things. Post it to no, socials. That's, here's the, 
You you gotta graffiti it in the way that you think is the most entertaining. Oh yeah, that's an even better but idea. The, but the overall message should be fuck the game. Yeah. But however you want to debase it in such a way that translates to yes. that. Whether it's adding words, taking things away, tearing it, tearing burn, whatever yeah, it is, yeah. whatever fuck it yeah. is to you. Let us know how fuck the KNG. And, and, and also, and we'll hashtag F the KNG needs to be on your on your social media post. You can say fuck if you F, want. F, F, <laughs> I was just making sure that it, I didn't it, fuck something, something else. up as social media. Well, yeah, I was like, oh fuck, man, I gotta be careful. This PC world. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be the kingdom news of glory, which is everyone's favorite Christian group. Yeah. Oh no, Kid, that would the be the kids' worst. next generation charity, and you're like, oh god, no. No! <laughs> you should probably check it. Uh, or Not you can send children. us spoilers uh, of this uh, cool t shirt design you're doing in our Discord if you go to discord.lawfulstupid.org. Yeah, you gotta show them off in the Discord. Oh, most yeah, definitely. Facts. We even have a fan art section. Or you can even put it in the art section. I don't care. Put it somewhere. We'll see it. We wanna know. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm uh, not sure about my actions. And I may, in fact, come to regret. Mm. Mm. We'll so something together, that I'm buddy. very sure about, and something that I will never regret, is donating to wait, 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 wait. Roll for Humanity <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Adoption Exchange. Uh, it's a really worthwhile cause. It's something that's very easy for you to do. You're playing TND anyway. Pick up on your D20s, or a D10, or a D6, or a D8, or flip a freaking coin for a D2. Worst case scenario, you're out two bucks. But just do a little something good through the world around you so you can feel like a double hero. You're like, ooh, I was a hero in my game when I killed the evil <laughs> Ryan. And then I was a hero in real life when, like, I helped a kid have a family forever. So I'm going to roll right now. I'm going to get a good number. That is a four. Uh, not teen this time. <laughs> Devin, you were... It was like a trick for you. It was Aww. a four. Uh, uh, hey, man! There's no shame in Wait, what'd you say game. it was again? Four, Just baby. really drive it home. Four whole dollars. <laughs> you didn't get another four, four, four whole dollars the adoption exchange didn't have before they do now because of this thing that we do. That's beautiful. I love it. It's true. Uh, and and maybe if some other people pick up the little ripple wave, it'll be more than four dollars. Maybe we don't have to go it alone. Maybe our party member's going to get our back with their rolls and they're going to let me know what they rolled. He's in hashtag roll free Mandy on Twitter. Mm, I love it. Okay. Nice. It is my time. 12 year old boy scout is a weird pause <laughs> know how I got me let me just start scout? over let me start over. 12 year old boy uses wait hold on 12 12 year old boy like named scout. 12 year old boy no 12 year old uses boy scout know how to rescue lost couple and injured dog on a hike okay what is I don't yeah I gotta read this in this but that's it 12 year old boy uses boy scout know how to rescue lost couple and injured dog on a hike. Okay. Got it. Sure. Uh, I was like, uh, struggle boat. Um. No. All right, cool. Good story. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, say, listen, listen, this 12-year-old boy, he's got Boy Scout know-how. And let me tell you, that's important, because he he rescued some people. But what the, here's here's what they, they don't want you to know, that nobody wants you to know. This 12-year-old Boy Scout, he fucking put them there. <laughs> this Dexter motherfucker drugged these bitches, put them out in the woods, fucked them up real good, caused panic, fear, fat on it. <laughs> Bad on it. This is the world's next Ted fucking Bundy, and you all are celebrating him. What does that say he about you? He put him there. Mm-hmm. What does that say about you? I don't know. They have to be pretty introspective tonight, I think. Uh, all right. So here's the thing about this story. Mm-hmm. You might think it's cute to prop up and cheer on. A paramilitary organization whose entire goal is to corrupt the very fabric of this nation, the future of this nation, and our youth? That's all right. Buy some popcorn. 
Enjoy it. Pair up. <laughs> maybe you, maybe it'll go. Maybe it'll pair well with your grains or or whatever whatever grasses you graze. You fucking sheeple. That's it. Uh, I, I love I just... the Boy Scouts are paramilitary. <laughs> they are! Google it! It's in their fucking charter. Basically, They're a paramilitary yeah. organization. By definition. They wear uniforms, they go around, they do survival skills, like they're they move in formations, they're fucking paramilitary they're organizations. Fucking nerds. <laughs> they're fucking nerds. Hey, if you get hey here, I'll I'll say it. if you're a Boy Scout, you're not kissing any girls. Who's like if you're a Boy Scout, you probably Facts. suck. Fuck Boy Scouts. That's me. Uh, also noteworthy is our $50 patron brought up a good point that this is two different headlines. So he does, in fact, rescue the lost couple, but he also does <laughs> injure the dog injured on the a hike. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we say we love you. We love, love you. you. Love Bye. you. Bye. 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 Go buy your Girl Scout cookies instead. <laughs> That's also a paramilitary organization. You do not get it. You cannot just cover it with chocolate and bonbons and say this is cute and good. It is. Take it, you take a mind and it's a free flowing organism and you put it into a box and you say you can only think this way. And that's the goal but, of public schools, of these paramilitary organizations, of, of the government, but, of money. That's the whole point. But aren't I cute and good? I was a Girl Scout. <laughs> Anti Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-mark done. <laughs> <laughs>